first stat is damage. This is just the base stat that everything multiplies off to give you your final damage. Crit. This is how often you inflict critical damage on a target. The cap for this is 100%. Crit damage is capped at 300%. Now this is going to be the base crit damage that your uh, sub weapon takes. This is going to be the base crit damage your primary weapon takes. And this is going to be the additive bonus against whatever target you're attacking. So if I'm attacking a boss, I have 105. And if I'm using a lance skill, I have 260. 260 plus 105 is 365. Again, this would be over the cap of 300, so it'd stop at 300. The R crit damage cap increases, which you can find out your base crit damage cap from the link in the description, the tinyurl.com slash akrf7. It has all of them for every class for both paths. Other things are this crit, uh, this set, for example, gives a 50% crit damage cap increase, and when you over cap crit, you get crit damage cap increase. So the cap for that is going to be 50%. The maximum over cap crit damage you can have is 50%. Speed. Now there's a few things about speed. The first is going to be the auto attack speed. This uh, reduces the time in between your auto attacks, which you can see in the top right there is going to be 1.9 seconds as a base for me. So every time I attack, there's 1.9 seconds between that and the next one. When you have more attack speed, that's going to be reduced. The maximum or well, the minimum attack speed is going to be 0.5 seconds. A link in the description will tell you exactly what attack speed you need to cap. From speed, the maximum you can get is 50, but you can also get it from Eidolons and from your secret stones and stuff like that. In your Eidolon stories, there's uh, something called Fast Cut, um, which I shall get to now. Uh, here, this actually reduces your attack speed by 3, so if I have only the 50 from speed, I'd actually only have 47. So do keep that in mind when working it out. If you don't have this or this uh, story, obviously not going to affect you, but if you do, uh, do take note. The other thing that speed's going to do is it's going to reduce your cooldowns. So if you did have a 6 second cooldown on the skill, it'll reduce it to 3 if you hit that cap of 50%. When you over cap speed, it converts into percentage chance to do 50% bonus damage, which is this heavy uh, speed thing, or high speed heavy attack, sorry. Again, this is a zeal. So this is a 50% zeal damage, and having more of it is a percentage chance. So the cap for that is 20%. HP is just how much damage you can take before dying. Death is just a straight reduction on any incoming damage. So if you had a million damage incoming, you have 80% death, which is the cap. You take 200k damage. When you overcap this stat, it converts into percentage HP. I believe the cap for that is 20%, but I'm not 100% sure. Evasion. Um, this caps at 95, and it's the chance that you evade basically projectiles, it is a few other things, but mainly projectiles. So boss attacks, you won't dodge, and red carpets, you won't really dodge. Um, when you overcap this, it's going to convert into a true chance to evade, so you can evade anything with this. That only applies when you're awakened, the same with the crit here. You only get the overcap for crit and for evasion when you are awakened. For death and for speed, you get it at any level. But for evasion and crit, you must be awakened. Uh, accuracy, it directly counts as evasion. So it's a straight reduction if you had 41% evasion and I had 40% accuracy, then I'd evade 1% of the time. But as you can see here, if I was attacking myself, I have more accuracy than I do evasion, which means I never miss. I would always hit myself every single time. Heal percentage is just a straight multiplier on any outgoing healing. Could be HOT, could be straight heal. It's going to be multiplied by that. Move speed is just, again, what it says on the tin, how fast you move, how fast you run. Um, the reason that you want a lot of this is because it allows you to clear dungeons quicker. It also allows you to keep up with other people that are moving very quickly through dungeons. Uh, moving on to the offensive tab, we have primary weapon damage bonus. Now this is just a straight damage multiplier that only affects your main weapon, not your sub. The Damage against bosses is an important stat because it counts as the general damage reduction shield of an enemy. Now, players can have this, but it's more commonly seen on, on mobs. Um, so, a common reduction in some of the older content was a 90% reduction. So here, I would uh, have 90% off of this 135, so I'd only do 45% extra damage to the target. So yes, if you have more than the general damage reduction shield, so more damage against bosses, then you're going to be over that. Again, this is only when hitting bosses, elite for elites, player for players. Um, 
I mentioned about that. The crit rate is just if you don't cap anyway, then it's just going to go against that, and it's going to over cap. It's going to go against your general crit rate reduction. Very similar idea. Uh, when you move on to the elemental damage now, um, this is just the extra damage you do when hitting that type of target again. But this has no. This isn't countering any shield really. Um, it's just that's how much damage extra you do. So next we're going to move on to the penetration stat. This counts as a boss's reinforced shield or penetration shield. Um, this is a very important stat because it's one of the few uh, reductions we cannot fully counter yet. You can get this from the weapon cards uh, and armor cards and also just from your weapons at different levels. Uh, the other way is you get an idol and story for it and there's also class pots and GK candies. Now, commonly, without the uh, GK candies or the uh, class pot or the story, just from the gears you're going to get 32 cap at level 80, 36 cap at level 90, and 42 cap at level 101. Again, these are soft caps, so the maximum penetration we can possibly get at the moment is 50. However, you're probably not going to be running with 50, so. If you want to find the penetration shield and the general damage reduction shield for any of the dungeons, you can find that in the link in the description, the Aura Kingdom database one. Um, that's not for Nightmare Lament or Sky Tower Hell. Uh, any uh, private server specific content isn't on there. However, if you turn it into Taiwanese or Chinese, you can um, find the newer content on there. So that is there. But the English is only stuff that is on main servers or um, you know the original RA game servers. The other types of damage you can get which aren't on these tabs are going to be your skill damage which is every skill has its own multiplier so you'll see I have more damage here on Roaring Thunder than I do on Spear Pen or Freezing Stab. Uh, there's two things with that, the first of which is it's a multiplier of your base damage, the second of which is you add a flat value on for whatever the skill level is. It's not a super important bonus. The main thing about these is like you get more death reduction from uh, Destructive Spear or the uh, Swift Toss, wherever it is, there you go. So the, the minus death is the best part about having a high level skill, however it does increase the damage of them as well. You also have the elemental skill damage boost, so here we have dark skills damage plus 17. Um, and that's just going to affect any of my skills that are dark, so Spear Pen or Shadow Arts Dark Thunder. There is also a bonus to this on your main weapon that will only affect that weapon. So for my Lancer, I have a Dark Lance, which means any dark skills I use that are Lance skills, I'm going to get a 20% bonus damage. So that'll affect the Spear Pen, however it will not affect the Dark Arts Thunder because it's a Shuriken skill. Again, my Shuriken Storm, so it'll affect this Shuriken Storm skill because it's for that weapon. The final type of uh, boost you can get is going to be a specific skill damage boost. Now this comes from a couple of places. Um, the first of which is charging a skill. So if you're playing Holy Sword you'll have the charge bar, if you're playing Warbow you'll charge it. Or with uh, here, Kunai Storm, you see full charge plus 120% damage, so that's going to affect that. The other place is you either get it from Envoy or from your weapon spec, and that's just a straight boost as well. So all of those things um, add up and multiply together, and you'll eventually come out with your final damage. If you want the damage formula, I can link that in the description. Um, however, I will be doing a more in-depth guide to why stats are good and what you should go for and stuff like that. And I might mention some more math there. Going to try and not do too much math here. That is everything for the main stats uh, for the offensive and stuff. I will go through the defensive tab now, but uh, if you don't want to <laughs> listen to this because it's not that important, then feel free to stop here. So thanks for watching if you're going now. So for the defensive tab, um, general crit rate reduction and general crit damage reduction work very much like general damage reduction, uh, in that whatever the target that's hitting you's damage against you is, or crit rate against you, so if I was hitting a boss, it'd be crit rate against bosses or crit damage against bosses, uh, is going gonna, is gonna to counter against these. Um, Something to note is that bards need 25% player crit rate so that they can counter this and you know uh, just have 15% more crit damage than they normally would. Uh, the reason for this is that if you don't crit 100% of the time, your healing is severely reduced. 
Again, if you did don't eat if you're seeing a bard that doesn't even have a hundred percent crit rate, if they have like seventy-five, they're only healing for half the time, for example. So it's a massive, massive thing to note when you are playing Bard that if you're not hitting that hundred percent crit rate, it is very, very detrimental. So moving on to boss damage reduction. Now, it has two relevances in PvE. The f uh, the first of which is it does reduce the damage you take from bosses. It's not super important because you're probably not likely to die, but hey, it exists. Um, and this is a flat reduction that cannot be counted, so whatever this says is the damage reduction it's doing. Um, and it cannot be reduced in combat or anything, that is just a set stat. The other thing is bosses and mobs have it in some of the 70 content, and a few other places, but mostly 70 content. Um, in the hell modes there, they had a 90% reduction, so you just do 10 times less damage, and there was nothing we could do about that, because like I said, cannot counter that kind of shield, it just exists. Um, so again, there's boss damage, elite damage, and player damage. For us, I believe the cap is 75. Like I said, obviously the, the bosses used to have more than that, but for us, I believe the cap is 75%. Don't explicitly know, but I assume boss crit rate reduction and boss crit damage reduction, and obviously the others, work in exactly the same way to that, but I don't explicitly know. The bonus to healing potency and the bonus to received healing, these are going to be the flat values or the number increase, not percentage, a flat value uh, onto your normal healing skills, not your uh, not your HOTs, just your normal healing skills. So this is to outgoing and this is to incoming. There is also a percentage for both of these, so the heal percentage is the outgoing one and there's a hidden percentage for the incoming one. Uh, the hidden percentage there is going to increase your uh, amount of healing you get from the uh, this one here, the uh, lifesteal or the nocturnal. The reason we call it nocturnal normally, or noct, is because that's the core that is used to get that. Uh, for the core here, you actually get it reduced by 90%. Any other kind of nocturnal tends not to be nerfed, although the one on Eidolons is. But none of that, any kind of nocturnal on skills, on here, on duelist, any of it, none of it works in STH or nightmare dungeons. Damage taken reflected back, basically a pointless stat, as it says on the tin, it reflects it back and it goes through their reductions, really not useful. EXP bonus from defeating mobs, again, was going to receive 100 EXP from killing the mob, I now receive 136. Drop rate bonus. This only affects mobs that do not drop an item every single time you kill them, so if you, if you kill it and it always drops an item, not going to get anything. If you have so much drop rate bonus that the mob does hit 100% chance to drop an item, then you can't increase this by any more. For bosses, you use treasure char treasure, ugh, treasure charms uh, to increase the number of drops you get from them. The final thing I want to talk about is going to be this chest piece uh, reduction thing. So there is elemental damage reduction when you receive it. You can get this from either the chest piece element you have, or there's, for example, here you can get elemental resist. There's a few places you can pick it up. Basically what it does is it reduces the incoming target's damage of the skill they're using. So if they have 100% dark skills damage, and they're hitting into this, um, the chest piece gives a 25% reduction, so that'd be a 75% bonus they had, rather than 100. But if they have zero, then they actually do 25% less damage, so it's a 75 instead of a 100% damage skill. Um, so yeah, it's important to go dark normally, because most of the bosses in this game are dark, and it just makes you slightly tankier against those things, although you may choose something else if you prefer, like being tankier against Fatima for lightning or something like that. But that's about it for all of the different stats in Aura Kingdom. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching. If you do have any more questions, please, please feel free to comment below. The links in the description are also very useful resources if you do need more information. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.